In this video, I'll go through the Year 7 Integers test preview. I'll put some time tags in the description below so you can just skip to the question numbers that you need help with if you're following along with the test preview. Otherwise, I'll put a brief description of what each sort of question is about so you can search for types of questions if you want some help. Question 1 asks us to find all the factors of 16. Factors are numbers that can be multiplied together to make this number. So we know that 1 times 16 makes 16. We know that 2 times 8 makes 16. And we know that 4 times 4 makes 16. So our factors are 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. Question 2 is asking us to find the lowest common multiple of 6 and 9. So to do that, what we're going to have to do is have a look at multiples. So if we multiply these numbers by different numbers, then we'll um, start to get our answer. So if we multiply 6 by 1, we get 6. If we multiply it by 2, we get 12. If we multiply it by 3, we get 18. Uh, if we multiply it by 4, we get 24. Let's skip to 9. If we multiply it by 1, we get 9. If we multiply it by 2, we get 18. And look here, we've got our answer here. The lowest common multiple is 18. Question 3 is asking us to find highest common factors okay, of 12 and 21. So let's have a look at listing what the factors of 12 and 21 are. We've got 1 times 12, we've got 2 times 6, and we've got 3 times 4. And then for 21, we have got 1 times 21, we've got 3 times 7. And so now that we've got all of our factors, let's look for the highest common one. And I think in this case, it's going to be 3. So the highest common factor is 3. Question 4 is asking us to list the prime numbers between 1 and 20. To do this, we'll need to know what a prime number is. A prime number is when you go looking for its factors, it is only that number and 1. Okay, So there's the numbers like 2, because it's only 1 times 2. It's the only factors. Or 3, the only factors are 1 times 3. So the prime numbers between 1 and 20 will be 2, 3, 5, 7... 11, 13, 17, and 19. A number like 15, for example, is not a prime number because you could have 3 times 5 to make 15. So we're just hunting for ones like this so it can only be 1 times 17. Question 5 is asking us to draw a factor tree. You should definitely go on Maths Online and watch the tutorial about drawing factor trees because there are lots of ways you can answer this question, but I'll show you one. If you take 24, one way to do this is to just keep halving this number. So I say 2 times 12, and then I'll halve that. 2 times 6, and then I'll halve that. It should be 2 times 3. And here... 2, 2, 2, and 3 are all prime numbers. Go back and have a look at question 4 if you're not sure what a prime number is. And these are the prime factors of uh, 24. Okay, So if we were going to answer it as prime factors, it would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 equals 24. But this question has got an extra little part. It's asking for it in index form. Okay, So we can collect these 2's up. And because there's 3 of them, it becomes 2 to the power of 3. In other words, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 equals 24. And this is the correct answer. As prime factors, it would be 2. Question 6 wants us to draw factor trees for 16 and 24. So we'll do that. I'll do it in the same way that I answered question 5. So I'll say 2 times 8. 2 times 4, and 2 times 2. And they're the prime numbers, the prime factors. And then if we do 16, oh sorry, 24, we'll say 2 times 12, and then 2 times 6, and then 2 times 3, 
they're our prime factors. But this time, this question is asking us for the highest common factor. So one way to do this is to take these, and we know that 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So the highest common factor is 8. Because in this, uh, this case it would be 2 times 8, and in this case it would be 3 times 8, making each of these. Okay, so question 7 is a worded question, but really all it's asking for is for you to find the factors of 18. Okay, so all the possible combinations that we could put into bags. So if we write out, like question 1, all the factors of 18, we could have 1 times 18. We could have 2 times 9, we could have 3 times 6. Uh, the only difference this time is, of course, that because it's asking for um, all the possible combinations of lolly bags, you could have one bag of 18 lollies, two bags of 9 lollies, three bags of 6 lollies, but don't forget you could also have 18 bags with one lolly in them, you could have nine bags with two lollies in them, and you could have six bags with three lollies in them. So, in the test, I would probably actually go through and write one bag of 18, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so two bags of nine, three bags of six, and so on until you had them all listed. Question 8 is asking us to find a prime factor to multiply with 3 and 5 to make a number that's bigger than 180. Okay, so we, we know we're going to have 3 times 5 times something. And it's going to have to equal a number that's bigger than 180. Now it tells us that this number is a prime factor between 10 and 15. And there's only two of those. There's 11 and there's 13. These are numbers that can only be divided by... or the factors of these numbers are only 1 and this number. So maybe one of the best things we can do here is just guess and check because there's only two possible answers. So it's a nice easy way of doing it. So if we put an 11 in here and we say 3, 5 is a 15 and 15 times 11 is 165, then that one's not correct. Okay, because that number is smaller than 180. So let's try 3 times 5 times 13 which will give us 3 fives of 15, and 15 times 13 is 195. Yep, that one looks good. That's bigger than 180. So the um, third factor is 13. All right, question nine is asking us to put an inequality symbol in between those numbers. Now, these two numbers are not equal, so we can't use an equal sign. So the first thing we have to decide is which is the higher of these two numbers or the greater of these two numbers, and it's minus six, okay? If you're not sure about this, think about it as being like a temperature scale, okay? So think of a thermometer, and I would much prefer that the weather was minus six than if it got down to minus nine, okay? So that makes that the greater number. And then we need to decide which way to put our symbol in, okay? So we've got our two numbers here. This is the correct way, greater than, okay? Now, if you have trouble remembering which way these symbols go around, think Pac-Man, okay? So draw Pac-Man in. He always tries to eat the bigger number. Question 10 wants us to go in descending order, so that's highest number to lowest number. So the highest number that I can see here is 3, and then I can see 1, and then I can see 0, and then I can see minus 2, and then I can see minus 7. Question 11 wants us to do this addition on a number line, so I've gone ahead and drawn a number line. Now, when you are looking at these, there are some instructions and there's some cheats to these. The first thing I like to do is put a positive up here and a negative over here on my number line. And then the question is a set of instructions. It says, start at minus 5, move to the right four places. So start at minus 5, put a circle around minus 5, 
Then it says move in a positive direction, so I know I'm going to be going this way. And then it says move four places, so we go one, two, three, four. And the new answer is minus one. Question 12 wants us to do a subtraction on a number line. So, again, you've got a series of three instructions. The first thing you should do is mark positive and negative on here. This will help. This tells you where to start. So it says start at positive 2. This tells me which direction to go in towards the negative. So I'm going to go that way. And this tells me how many places. I haven't given myself enough room here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If you've drawn a number line where you've given yourself enough room, you will see that you land at minus 5. Sorry about that. So, we know that 2 minus 7 is minus 5. Question 13 is minus 15 minus minus 7. Now you've got two options when you come to this question. Whenever you see two negatives, you can say two wrongs make a right, and you can make that a plus. But if you want to understand what's happening here, imagine you have a debt of $15, and then you remove $7 of the debt. Okay? In other words, you pay back $7. How much do you still owe? Okay? So it would be, I owe $15, I pay 7 of it back, and now I still owe eight dollars. <coughs> In question 14, there's a lot of symbols here and some brackets just to confuse you. So we're going to clean this question up before we start. We don't need that plus out the front because we know that it's a positive two if there's nothing there. And then if you've got and I subtract seven, you can get rid of this and. So it's just two minus seven. So this says I have two dollars and I spend seven so now I've gone into debt okay so if I've got two dollars and I spend seven I'm going to have to borrow five dollars off somebody in order to purchase that question 15 is a good question it's asking you about temperature when we are dealing with negative numbers the two most common places that you'll find them are with money and with temperature so this is a good Hobart question. Let's imagine for a second that it's a very cold winter's day um, and evening it was only 6 degrees but then on top of Mount Wellington it fell by a further 12 degrees overnight. Then that means that the temperature will have gone down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 degrees to minus 6. So 6 minus 12 is negative 6 degrees Celsius.